In the next 30 minutes, you're going to see a real-life drama worthy of a Hollywood blockbuster. Stories of life and death, heroes and victims, unexpected victories, and lessons learned. This is the truth about trauma. Every day here in San Diego County, countless acts of courage and compassion are performed by an elite team of lifesavers, men and women competing against the clock. Trauma patients who receive intensive care within 60 minutes have triple the chance for survival and dramatically improve their outcomes. Here in San Diego County, trauma deaths are at an all-time low. San Diego's trauma system is one of the best in the world. Here's how it all started. On a warm summer afternoon in 1984, the San Diego County trauma system was prepared to be put to its very first test when gunman James Huberty went on a 77-minute shooting spree at a McDonald's restaurant in San Ysidro. And I can remember looking at my partner somewhere between the, or through the middle of it, Steve Shackford, and we both just sort of looked at each other and nodded and said, yes, we're ready. Just a year before this tragedy, the County of San Diego Board of Supervisors, in a public-private partnership, approved a trauma system for San Diego County consisting of five adult trauma centers and one pediatric trauma center. The whole purpose of the trauma system is to get the right patient to the right hospital in the right time. During the system's infancy, one of the first comprehensive studies looking at trauma care in the nation, the Amherst study, found before the system was in place, the preventable death rate for trauma victims was 21%. The first year, 1984, the preventable death rate dropped below 3%, and it's stayed there ever since. So we have conclusive proof that it makes a difference where you're taken after you're injured. Sharp Memorial, UCSD Medical Center, Mercy Hospital, Scripps Memorial La Jolla, Palomar Medical Center, and Children's Hospital were required to be staffed with an elite team of specialists 24 hours a day, seven days a week, and they had to be available on a moment's notice. It means if you are injured in San Diego County, you are going to rapidly be taken to a trauma center, and it doesn't matter which one. And you're going to have a team ready, waiting, and prepared to take care of you. As the system developed, paramedics and medical crews from Life Flight gave trauma patients immediate life-saving care in the field. Initially, when we first began, we flew with a pilot, a nurse, a flight nurse, and a, and a, a physician from the emergency department. Nearly three decades later, the system is a model for trauma systems worldwide. You just are amazed sometimes at the people that do survive because of the care that they receive. And amazing new technology is further improving the care by helping diagnose unseen injuries more quickly in trauma patients. Now we can see those injuries real time with these new CT scanners, and they get better every day. We're working on technology now that will actually show concussions. It's amazing stuff, and it will really, really change the whole complexion of how we do trauma care. Technology helps, but the most vital tool is the people behind San Diego's trauma system. We can't do it by ourselves, and if the one thing that the system has taught us, it is total teamwork. Teamwork, technology, and research are the keys to the future of trauma care. There is no question that uh, the knowledge obtained from basic science research, clinical research, will give us the ability to take much better care of our patients. That extraordinary care has saved more than 150,000 lives in San Diego so far. If you are seriously injured anywhere in the more than 4,000 square miles of San Diego County, in 15 minutes on average, you will be at one of San Diego's six trauma centers. It looks like something right out of a Hollywood action movie. But these aren't actors. 
They're the men and women who make up the first life-saving link in San Diego's trauma system. We're lucky in San Diego to have highly trained paramedics and EMTs in the field who can really concentrate on keeping the patient breathing, keeping their circulation going, with that high degree of expertise really contributing to saving lives. It's an amazing, coordinated effort to bring immediate help to someone who's just suffered a traumatic injury. Here's how it works. The county is split into five geographic areas. Each adult trauma center is located in one of those defined areas. Rady Children's Hospital, the pediatric trauma center, covers the entire county. That means that once somebody is identified as a trauma patient, they are rescued, if you will, uh, assessed, delivered to a trauma center that's closest to them. There's a backup plan in place so every patient receives the best care, no matter how busy the trauma center might be. Uh, medic 21, I copy. Let me just double check to make sure they're open. And, uh, stand by one second. If our hospital gets overrun by, by activity, all of a sudden we don't aren't available or as available as we needed to be in the beginning, then one of the other hospitals is available to take over and, and vice versa. So we work together to do that. That's what happened when a quiet morning turned to terror at Santana High School. Unfortunately, I was in his path that day. He showed us no mercy as he shot us as we ran for our lives. A 15-year-old freshman went on a shooting spree, killing two students and wounding 13 others. Paramedics and ambulances and flight medics from Mercy Air delivered the injured teenagers to area trauma centers within 20 minutes. From the time of the injury to the time of the response, communication-wise to the delivery of the patient, and then what we do in here is streamline. It's really incredible. From the time the patient enters the trauma room until he leaves the hospital, the same team continues to be involved in their care. Feeling good enough? Mm-hmm. Walking? Mm-hmm. I've been on crutches twice. Okay, good. They know us. I give them my card. They have my pager. Their families call me, uh, ask questions, and I think they just feel a sense of security. Um, knowing that there's someone there for them. And when trauma survivors are well enough to leave the hospital, the system doesn't desert them. The financial commitment to keep the system running is extraordinary. Trauma care is a huge burden on the hospital in terms of resources, availability of uh, operating rooms, ICU beds, those kinds of things. San Diego's trauma system works so well, there's an effort underway to create a statewide trauma system. Our goal is to consolidate and work together so that we have a network that spans from our border up to Oregon. It takes many dedicated and trained personnel to make the system work. From the dispatchers at the 911 call center to the paramedics and firefighters who answer those calls. From the trauma teams waiting at San Diego's six trauma centers to the staff who keep it all running. These exceptional men and women are the real heroes. Life hangs in the balance every day at San Diego's six trauma centers. You are about to meet some of the survivors and share in their unexpected victories. Like many young men, Hollis Cameron was born with an unquenchable, adrenaline-charged hunger for adventure. What a Growing up, I was uh, definitely a risk taker. But now he looks at life quite differently. It should be pretty apparent that this is dangerous. But it wasn't apparent to me. In high school, Cameron broke his neck while helping a friend make a video for a Spanish class assignment. Hollis climbed inside a trash can and rolled down a steep hill. Hey, are you okay? I can feel myself bounce up in the air the first time, and I'm, I'm airborne, just spinning. And I land, and I hit a second time, and I bounce up, and I'm airborne, and I'm spinning again. When the trash can stopped rolling, Cameron realized the extent of his injuries. I'm laying there, and I'm, uh, I tell my body, okay, get out of the trash can, right? And then when I send the signals for my body to move, nothing moved. His stunned friends called 911, initiating the first link to providing immediate trauma care for Hollis. They had to actually drive the ambulance down around the golf course and cut through the fence over there. Wondering if my best friend is going to be paralyzed or not from some stupid stunt. When Hollis arrived at Scripps Memorial La Jolla, doctors stabilized his spine with a halo. Spine surgeon Tim Peppers didn't hold out much hope. We didn't know how severe the injury to his spinal cord was, so it's very difficult to predict the, the final functional outcome. 
Uh, we knew he wasn't completely paralyzed or quadriplegic. In Hollis's case, having a trauma team assess his injuries quickly made all the difference. He underwent immediate surgery. When this kind of rotated this way, or on the left kind of went like that. In his case, he did get some improvement, and quite a bit of improvement, actually. Hollis credits the trauma system and the team at Scripps Memorial La Jolla, who helped him get through the ordeal. It's really the fact that you have these, these, these nurses who do genuinely care about you and, and want to help you, and that's really uh, what, what makes it possible to, to get through a situation like that, is the people that are around you. But that's what we do as nurses. It's all about seeing them recover. And I love it. He's worked hard to regain what he's lost. Physically, um, my, my left hand is, is still very limited, right? Like uh, my fingers, I can kind of, kind of move them and stuff, um, you know, but not really. Uh, I don't have a lot of movement in my shoulder and stuff. Okay. Instead of adrenaline, creativity flows through Hollis's veins these days. He's editing video projects and attending film school. That's cool, I work with that. Hollis can now look back at the pivotal moment that changed his life. I was completely paralyzed at the bottom of, of this hill. And is thankful San Diego's trauma system intervened and spared him that fate. Johnny Gutierrez is just happy to be alive to enjoy his wife and son. But he almost didn't make it after a co-worker opened fire on him with an AK-47 assault rifle. Just walking to walk back to punch in is the way he calls my name and I turn around and look and he has it up like this showing it to me and on the way down was when he puts it like in the shooting position and, and he shoots. A bullet pierced Johnny's groin and tore straight through his buttocks. He was gravely wounded. Once they were putting me up the ambulance that's when the cops also asked me for a number they can call so they can let my family members know. But I was, my, like, my mind was already made, like, I wasn't gonna <laughs> make it. Johnny doesn't remember arriving at UCSD's trauma center. Dr. Raul Coimbra headed the team waiting for him. He was uh, basically bleeding to death when he came immediately after his injury, and uh, he was taken immediately to the operating room required very advanced procedures in the operating room as well as in the interventional radiology suite. Went back to the operating room multiple times. I was really scared. I thought he was going to die. For a man on the brink of death, Johnny's made remarkable progress despite suffering nerve damage to the inside of his right leg, damage to his bladder, and until recently, he had to wear a colostomy bag. Hi, Johnny. How you been? Good to see you. Good to see you, too. How are you feeling? Uh, feeling way better, way better. So yeah. I'm really glad for that. Um, I'm here to thank you uh, personally and the UCSD trauma for saving my life that day. But I really wanted to see who was that doctor that made that magic come true. So really wanted to thank you and the trauma center with the deepness of my heart. Thank you. It's uh, very rewarding to all of us, not just for me personally, but for the whole trauma team, the nurses, and everybody that was involved in your care to see you standing up and having a regular life and having a family and getting on with your life. Bianca was four months pregnant with the couple's son when Johnny was shot. Now they're a family building for the future. If not for the UCSD Trauma Center, I don't think I would have made it. Michael Hansen remembers the moments leading up to the worst night of his life. There were two illegal straight acers that had their headlights off that came and hit us going very fast. The impact pushed the car more than 200 feet, killing Michael's brother Brian and Brian's girlfriend Shanna instantly. Michael suffered severe brain injuries. I woke up in the hospital. That's all I remember. But Michael's mother, Debbie, remembers everything. She was waiting at home, unaware that just two blocks away, rescuers were trying to save her two sons. I didn't know that it was my kids in the car for a while. I was just a nightmare for me, just a nightmare. Paramedics rushed Michael to Scripps Mercy Hospital, where a trauma team was standing by, the same medical professionals Debbie worked with every day as a trauma ICU nurse. When we're working and we hear a trauma called overhead, um, you know, us, us moms kind of take a little clutch and go, you know, do I know where my kids are? Debbie says her son was nearly unrecognizable. Trauma surgeon Seth Krosner took Michael into surgery immediately. 
just changes your life completely in a heartbeat, literally. Michael's brain injuries were so severe, Debbie and Ken didn't know whether he'd make it past the vegetative state. They hoped for a miracle, and soon one came. Early on, the doctors were starting, were calling him a miracle, that he could talk, and that he was starting to uh, do things that they definitely all thought, there's just no way that he can do that. So then they, they did start using the word miracle. In Michael's case, it's certainly very important that he came to a trauma center. It certainly helped save his life and help increase the quality of life he's living now. After many agonizing months of constant care, Michael's parents learned he would be coming home. We knew that he was a miracle, we could tell. It's been a difficult journey for Michael, but he's slowly regaining some of what he lost. Take the left elbow under the right elbow this time. He's made a remarkable recovery. Doctors had predicted Michael would never walk again, but this incredible young man proved them wrong. It does me good to see you looking so well. You went through an awful lot. Yes. An awful lot. And you're, you're looking great now. Debbie and Ken have nothing but praise for San Diego's trauma system for saving their son's life. <laughs> yeah, that's wonderful. I'll say one. These people are dedicated to what they're doing. They like doing it. They are the right people to be doing that. I would thank God for that. And I mean, literally, I would. I would thank the Lord that this group of people exists. It was a picture-perfect wedding. The setting, a stunning resort in Puerto Vallarta, Mexico. It was a day Frank Aliotto and his bride Kristen dreamed about and planned to perfection. We had ice cream and like an ice cream social one night. We had fireworks one night. Uh, just a whole week with your whole family and your whole wedding party. And it, it, it was great fun. We got married on a beautiful terrace overlooking the water and it was perfect. In sickness and in health. After Kristen and Frank exchanged vows, their large circle of family and friends enjoyed the wedding festivities. And later, the new bride took a dip in the resort pool. She was dancing around in the pool because there's a really shallow area in the pool. When Frank jumped in to join Kristen, the unimaginable happened. I remember floating in the pool and thinking I couldn't move. Frank had hit his head, snapping his spine. There were people everywhere, all of our friends, holding him to make him stable. And I was holding his hand. Family members with medical training stabilized Frank until he was taken to a clinic in Mexico. My father asked if I wanted to be treated there or what I wanted to do. And I was like, get me a plane. I want to go home now. Fortunately for Frank, International Services, a component of San Diego's trauma system, got Frank to the trauma center at Sharp Memorial Hospital within seven hours of his accident. It was really a seamless transition of Okay, all of a sudden I'm in San Diego and I'm sitting here and I don't know how we made it here. I really don't. Sharp's trauma team was waiting for Frank, ready to give him treatment to prevent further paralysis. These two vertebrae had significant injuries. Trauma surgeon Gregory Imler knew Frank needed an immediate operation to stabilize his broken spine. Spinal cord injuries at this level, some people simply die. Uh, there is a definite mortality rate to that injury. Frank and Kristen spent their honeymoon in Sharp's ICU trying to adjust to their new reality. I never thought we would start so soon with the in sickness. The vows Frank and Kristen took that December day now have new meaning. It's going to be the same life, just a little different. Jake Robinson is an accomplished and popular young man. He's competed in four sports at Fallbrook High School, studied hard, and his classmates voted him prom king. But his life dramatically changed one day after leaving football practice. He was tailgating a friend's car, lost control, and slammed into a telephone pole. He wasn't wearing a seatbelt. I remember opening my eyes and realizing somewhat what happened. And then I remember the feeling of not being able to move my legs. Paramedics took Jake to Palomar Hospital's trauma center where Dr. Gregory Campbell and his team were standing by. And then you can start to call people and get people mobilized. That's what we do, that's what we do. That's what makes Palomar Trauma Center, any hospital trauma center, we act quickly to try to save these people because time is so important. Well, the accident happened at 9.08. Yeah. And the, for the CAT scan prints that we got were taken 
at 10.28. So an hour and 20 minutes later, CAT scans were already produced. And this is one of the uh, reconstructions of his spine, and you don't have to be a physician to figure out that, again, you can see all these look normal, and all of a sudden you get here and you can just see, and see how it's not aligned anymore. This kid's 17, a football player, you know, just, he's got his whole life ahead of him. And to walk in and tell our mother or father that he's got a devastating spine injury, I mean, you know, we're all parents. I mean, it's just heartbreak. Jake had a fractured spine, and that night he sensed he was in the right place. I just remember as soon as I saw those doors opened, I just felt this kind of relief, like I was safe. Jake survived broken ribs, bruised lungs, and pneumonia, but his spine is permanently damaged. It's scary. It's sad. It's so many emotions that clash together at the same time. Jake is determined in his rehabilitation, an important element of the trauma care system. He uses a wheelchair now, which made him nervous about returning to Fallbrook High. Going back to school was one of the one of the one of my biggest fears coming out of the hospital. I was really scared. Jake needn't have worried. His friends have rallied around him. He's a wonderful guy. Like there's really no words to really describe him. I mean, he's after everything, like he's really inspired like a lot of people and myself. How you doing? See ya. You too, man. You look like you're doing all right. Yeah. Dr. Campbell is impressed by Jake's strength and determination. As hard it is, as it is, it's kind of a neat experience in a way. Sure. So you get to see a, a perspective of life that you don't get to see in anything else. Right. And it's clear Jake's experience with the Palomar Hospital trauma team has made a big impression. He'll be attending UCSD this fall. Like anything, it's a big step and it's, uh, it's going to be scary and um, a challenge. But uh, eventually I, I want to hopefully go into med school after and uh, study medicine. It doesn't take much to entertain three-year-old Skylar Potter. You want me to swing you? Yeah! Mm. She giggles and enjoys serving a cup of pretend tea just like any toddler girl. But underneath that sweet smile, Skylar is struggling. Thank you. When she was two, Skylar suffered a traumatic brain injury after a mechanical problem caused her parents' car to veer out of control into oncoming traffic. We were going to either hit a telephone pole or hit them head on. An SUV plowed into the passenger side of the car, right where Skylar was strapped into her car seat. I looked in the back seat and Skylar was just laying in her car seat. The impact sent the car spinning into the front yard of Grossmont High School teacher Brent Knight. He put her on the grass and started CPR on her because she wasn't breathing and didn't have a pulse. As I was pressing on her chest, her heart just started immediately like a firecracker in my hand. You could feel the explosive jump as it jumped to life. Brent kept Skyler breathing until paramedics from the fire department took over. During the 20 minute ride to Rady Children's Hospital, paramedics radioed information about the toddler's condition to the trauma team. We knew that it sounded like the patient had been hurt severely and had a head injury um, and wasn't breathing well, so we knew we had to get our medications ready and. Um, our equipment ready. When Dr. Susan Duffy first saw her tiny patient, she knew every second counted. She was really totally unresponsive. Um, her pupils were different sizes, which is an indication of a very serious head injury. Skylar was showing signs of increased pressure in the brain, which could worsen her already fragile condition. If it had taken a lot longer for her to get here, her injury would have been much more severe. To help her brain heal, Skylar was put into a medically induced coma. They wouldn't promise anything to us. They wouldn't promise if she would walk, talk, um, sit up by herself, if she'd remember us. They didn't want to give us false hope. After three weeks of care in the ICU, Skylar woke up from her coma. You know, she couldn't communicate as well. She wasn't getting up and walking around. She wasn't talking. Um, eye contact, she wasn't making eye contact, which was a big thing. It was weeks before Skylar showed any sign of improvement. Wasn't it Father's Day night, right before Father's Day morning, when mm -hmm. she said, thank you, Mommy, just out of nowhere, never talked, never said a she word. She wasn't talking, yeah. Wasn't talking at all, just said, thank you, Mommy. I ran down the hallway to get the nurses. Skylar worked six days a week, relearning how to walk, talk, and master other milestones of a typical two-year-old. Skylar had a whole rehabilitation team working with her. Um, from a rehabilitation physician, all the different therapists, um, and all of that's necessary for a trauma program to work. Boy, you're walking like a champ. 
You're Less so than strong. a year later, Skylar is back at Children's, visiting members of the trauma team who worked together to save her life. Um, for Skylar, I think it made all the difference in the world that she got from somewhere out in East County to Children's Hospital um, within 20 minutes of the 9-11 call. Skylar's parents had little idea of the detailed planning it took to coordinate so many medical professionals in a moment's notice until that awful night a year ago. It made a difference for us and saved her life. The men and women in the trenches saving lives know the truth. The truth about trauma, it's preventable. I wasn't thinking about the consequences. Ended up taking the turn a little too widely and just lost control. Life could have been different for Hollis and Jake. More than half of trauma injuries are preventable. Prevention is simply utilizing your mind and thinking about what the uh, effects are gonna be of your actions just like it is for anything else. Car crashes are the number one preventable cause of death of children and young adults, as well as a major cause of permanent brain damage and spinal cord injuries. If you don't have your seatbelt on, you're either gonna die or you're gonna be like Jake and you're gonna have a devastating injury. It's that simple. Sadly, there's another serious problem associated with trauma. You're seeing more kids drink at younger ages. That's why a program called Every 15 Minutes Students have been involved in a collision. Forces teenagers to think about their decisions about alcohol and driving. Protect your little ones. Make sure any child six years or younger is properly strapped into a baby car seat or booster seat. And never put your child in the front seat. You have the ultimate responsibility to make sure that your child is restrained. Drivers who use cell phones to dial, talk, or text are four times more likely to be seriously injured in a car crash always use a hands-free device. Don't consider children drown-proof. Never leave a child unsupervised near a pool. Put fencing and self-latching gates around your pool. Use an alarm and cover. And take a CPR class. Falls are a significant cause of trauma injuries in both young and old. They account for three million emergency visits each year. Prevent tripping on small rugs by taping them to the floor or don't use them at all. Use safety gates at the top and bottom of stairs. Clear away clutter and have well-lit hallways and rooms. Whether you're four or 40, wear a helmet skating, skiing, biking, on a motorcycle or horseback riding. A helmet reduces the risk of brain injury or head injury by 85%. Perhaps the most important tip for you to remember is use your brain. Think carefully before you decide to do something risky. Everybody has their moments of thrills and chills. Sometimes you get away with it and sometimes you come see me. You've heard the truth about trauma. It's preventable. Frank, Michael, Skyler, Jake, Hollis, and Johnny all fought hard to heal themselves, but they couldn't have done it without the real-life heroes who battled to save them.